Well, hello again. Welcome back to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week from the undisclosed locations in Cleveland, Ohio. It's Paul Shrimp with Eric Spillagoy again. Hello, welcome, Eric. Yeah, hey, Paul. I uh, actually, I remember I got an email from somebody not too many days ago that said that when you mentioned undisclosed locations, that they uh, they took a swig of uh, of a drink. So I guess our our drinking game is working with undisclosed location. Now we've said it three times. So. Speaking of that, you know, our, our friend uh, Amy Esmus of Esmus Farm Supply uh, had a conversation with her, and she had also said that she was um, uh, indulging in um, beverages when we were mentioning undisclosed locations. So there you go again. Four. Amy, there we go. That's right. It's a big score for you. So, uh, yeah, the other thing I was talking to her about is I know you two had talked about some kind of a um, – you know, some kind of a dining experience while using, you know, common problem weeds. <laughs> that we well, find yeah, I mean, I've teased that the only thing we don't have on this talk show, I mean, you know, we've done live interviews, we've done from the from the event videos, we haven't had a cooking segment. So I figured a cooking segment of some type uh, would make sense. And, uh, you know, our friend Amy did suggest that if you can't beat the weeds, you might as well eat the weeds. So uh, that's kind of where this germ of an idea came from. Yep. And yes, that germ of an idea may be coming to a reality fairly soon. She's actually, you know, really against her better business judgment. She's cultivating some weeds at her house. And then she has like people come over and say, hey, this is the person I trust for my weed control. Wow, it's really interesting. You've got these huge weeds in your garden. But anyway. She's growing those things. She's going to put together a little bit of a video. So we're going to do it live on on camera in our studio, but we don't have a studio right now. Our studio is our house, so she's going to do some shooting for us, and then we're gonna we're gonna see what that looks like and put together kind of a video segment of you know consumable weeds and and also some weeds you shouldn't consume, which she was mentioning to me too, and the various things they can do to you. And I, I won't get into that, but that was certainly certainly a a fun conversation that we had among other things. Um, I have, we've both been having uh, lots of conversations about what's happening sure. out there in the countryside. So we can't visit. Um, sounds like things are mostly in the Midwest are tooling along, although I talked to some folks in South Dakota and there's some problems there with, uh, with water. And, and I, and I know that, uh, you know, they've had a, uh, it looks like another year of protect plant in the Eastern part of the state. And, um, just, just still problems galore there. So, you know, there's still some unfortunate pockets, but overall, um, things seem to continue to go well for uh, for uh, the traditional row crops. Well, speaking of that, thank you for the segue, Paul. You're always very good about that, by the way. Um, I, I did find some statistics regarding uh, acreage and what's been planted. Uh, as you may remember, this specific is to corn. Uh, back in March, we were talking about about 97 million acres of corn going into the ground, which most folks were a little nervous about because of how much carryover we had from 2019. Uh, but lo and behold, now uh, through the end of June, it looks like we've only got 92 million acres of corn that are actually going to go in the ground. So 5 million acres of, uh, of cropland are going to be planted with other crops and not corn. And as you may imagine, Paul, with uh, that uh, that reduction in acreage, corn prices are actually on the rise. Um, remember, we said earlier in videos this year that around 350 a bushel was what farmers were looking for to turn a profit on corn in 2020. And as of this morning, corn per bushel prices were at 360. So we're a dime over that. So good news for corn growers that. If you got it in the ground, uh, it looks like you'll be making a little more money on it than was anticipated uh, back in March. Yeah, the, you know, the news has traveled so much faster now. I mean, you see the stock market go up and down based on, you know, small bits of news, little changes here and there. Um, and that news just seems to make the impact that much more significant once it does come. So hopefully some people can take advantage of that and, and uh, you know, find a way to get to a better balance sheet. Um but yep, any 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 certainly any rise in price is good news for us. Yeah, and again, as uh, as another corn related item, as uh, uh, markets and states are starting to reopen from their COVID nineteen shutdowns, uh, ethanol production apparently is going back up, uh, which I guess means demand is also rising. Uh, through the end of June, Paul, it's up zero point eight percent from a year ago. Uh, with ethanol production, 
Uh, again, not a huge increase, but uh, given how down the market was there in the uh, spring months, uh, you know, any uptick is a good thing. Absolutely. Certainly welcome news. Yeah. So now I got a trivia question for you, Paul, because I know you love these. I love your trivia questions. They're the yes. best. Yes. So here I'm going to throw out three numbers for you, and I want to see if you can piece together what what the overall market I'm talking about uh, relates to with these numbers. 81 41 zero. And before you say it, no, Paul, it is now not an, a liquid fertilizer formulation. So, but 81 41 zero. The alcoholic content of my favorite beverage. <laughs> <laughs> From the undisclosed location. There we go. We said it a fifth time. I, you got me, sir. What you got? Trade shows, Paul, in the coronavirus of uh, era of 2020. I was reading an article that said that so far in 2020, 81% of trade shows have either been postponed or canceled outright. Uh, 41% of those have gone virtual, and 0% would be the number of apparently agricultural-related trade shows and events that were held during the second quarter of 2020. So, and obviously the jury's still out on the third quarter. I know I have, I think, two items on uh, my calendar, uh, two potential events uh, in September, but uh, it remains to be seen if those actually will take place in person or if they'll get postponed or go virtual. Yeah, certainly a, certainly a tough call to make right now, though it, it does seem like the rest of the year is, is um, in some level of jeopardy. So, um, you know, what we're seeing, I think, um, you know, when we talk to our even our sales folks internally, we see a, a lot of interest in trying to figure out how to talk to the market, um, how to reach the market in unique ways. Um, just because people are anticipating that this is going to be a um, this is going to be a challenge through the rest of the year. So, um, yep, it's 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 out there. It's and and it's uh, probably. <laughs> Probably looking through most of the rest of the year having having challenging times, if not the whole Well, year. And, and, and even further, I know we had a phone call the other day with our friends, uh, our sister publication, Cotton Grower, where they mentioned the Beltwide Cotton Conference, which was supposed to take place January 5th through the 7th, 2021, has now been turned into a virtual event. So, again, we'll, we're spilling into 2021 with show disruption. So, yeah, I'm not sure when this... Uh, when this ends, Paul, and if anybody will actually be anywhere in person for the rest of this calendar year. Yeah, I mean, it it, it speaks to how um, how conferences will approach the future, um, and you, you wonder, you know, people are talking about being zoomed out and having just too much, <laughs> too many meetings uh, electronic, and not really having the interactivity. On the other hand, things that can easily be delivered where you capture most of the value. Um, uh, online, like you know, a, a, a session that's basically just a person talking with PowerPoint, as opposed to interacting. I mean, the, the thing that really gets lost is is being able to walk around the halls and meeting people. You know, hitting you know, bumping yeah. into people outside the bathroom or in the hallways or in between sessions and meeting people that you didn't even know might be there or that you really wanted to see and knew just didn't know you could catch up with. Um, this kind of accidental. Uh, networking sorts of, uh, of activities are really what's what's being missed. So I think conferences that can do that, that can create that inter create that interactivity, will endure. But the ones that are just purely this podium kind of discussion things that can be done over the over the internet, I think people probably may realize that that's that's something that can be done pretty easily that way and not have the expense of travel and still get the benefit from what they're you know from what they're attending. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll have, again, we'll have to be watching this. And one other thing to note, uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, I know we had reported in the video past that Bayer and uh, the litigators had reached a settlement regarding glyphosate for about $11 billion to settle the numerous lawsuits that were out there. Um, but I guess there's some objection from a judge regarding uh, future claimants and their rights with that settlement. So apparently there's a hearing scheduled for July 24th to discuss this settlement agreement a little more in depth. Uh, so stay tuned uh, for our video at the end of July and uh, hopefully have an update for you on what all that might mean for Bayer in the settlement. Yep. It didn't sound like Bayer was completely surprised about that. I, I was no. I was surprised that he, nod, he gave a nod that 
he would probably be inclined to reject the uh, the settlement as it was put together. But at the same time, maybe there was a sense that he would uh, he wanted to revisit this panel idea, which was kind of the, the science panel was the, comp the component of it that they that he was um, squeamish about. Um, but we'll see um, we'll see what happens ultimately there. Um, or hopefully very quickly so we know we kind of know what the lay of the land is and we can move forward yeah like i say probably by the end of the month we'll know so yeah probably our the last week of july when we have our video we'll have an update on that story very good anything else sir no that covers what i had for you no i just you know I, with the last thing i say about you know amy was was talking and we we're i was talking about some of the you know the just the craziness here about how you know, we're, we're sort of pent up and locked up in here. And she says, you know what, well, the thing is, a lot of us out here in Ag, all of us out here in Ag are still making it happen regardless. And we're not inviting our farmers into the buildings. We're not mixing and, you know, mixing customers with, with um, suppliers, customers with, with retail personnel. But so we've, we've really been continuing to crank it out and, and working. And, and we, we thank everybody out there because you guys are the frontline workers too. You're keeping things moving, getting things planted. Um, and doing an awesome job at it so you know thanks to all of you for for what you do and we, we certainly appreciate it and we you know do our part we talk about it in the city and i talk to people here about you know agriculture they barely know anything's anything's happening uh other than they're just trying to follow the the guidelines for distancing and just keep on cranking so that's and, and that's a good thing for everybody so thank you and that's it for this edition of crop life retail we, we appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next week if you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.